Gourmet number 21, Gourmet Coliseum. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the appetite-inducing, the hunger pain-making tale of Toriko. You know, like 9 out of 10 times with these, I almost say One Piece. I seriously have to remember what the hell I'm reading and reviewing here, because it's just, it's getting ridiculous. So, uh, anyway, Toriko is what we're on, and what we're talking about. The last chapter saw us, of course, with uh, us being formally introduced to uh, director Mansum, and uh, seeing that him and Toriko have obviously some kind of past uh, history together, as they kind of poked fun of and uh, each other, and, and just, you know, just sort of like old friends. Uh, you know, Komatsu is just overwhelmed by being uh, in the actual labs of, of Igo's, um, you know, of Igo's, uh, was, how do you call it? <laughs> their, their, it's the number one place, their preserve, their, uh, their labs, their, for whatever, I can't remember the name, <laughs> right now it's escaping me, so it'll come back to me in a moment and then we'll circle back around. But at any rate, um, they are in the labs. They went through the labs. And then, of course, the ending was, you know, really uh, Toriko, you know, kind of meeting up with and, uh, you know, meeting up with Manson, uh, director Manson, Manson. And, uh, and them talking about, and him actually talking about a battle wolf being in the Coliseum today. So we weren't really told a whole lot about the Coliseum. I just kind of made a couple of predictions loosely based on, you know, the two plus two, you know, being four uh, method that I use. And, um, and that's really where things left off. This chapter is cool because it picks up right where we left off. Uh, Toriko and uh, Director Mansum and Komatsu are actually... Um, and, and you know what? That was the name. Is the, it's, it's the Igo Research Lab. You know, Research Lab. And they have their, their preserve there. But it's the, it's the number one preserve. So <laughs> anyway, so they come into the Coliseum. And it's kind of cool because we get um, a little bit of backstory um, about... Number one, they come in. Of course, they're fighting the Troll Kong and the Gararagator are fighting each other. Which is really kind of a cool scene that's depicted because it looks like the Troll Kong goes and, and gets, you know, gets a hit on the Gararagator. And then the Gararagator goes and just whips his ass into the wall and then goes up and grabs him, you know, in between his jaws. And it looks like the Gararagator's got the upper hand on him. And they explain that even though the capture levels are, are different, you know, um, that the they try to match up creatures, obviously, that are going to be, you know, a, a good fight against one another. But even though the Troll Kong's capture level is higher, meaning that he would be stronger, he's tired out because he's actually, you know, he fought other beasts in there because they, they release several of them at a time and then they kind of it's all just like a you know king of the hill last man standing type of deal so uh so then anyway, the troll kong it looks like he's i mean he's getting shaken around by the alligator it looks like the alligator's just going to town on him you know and he winds up going and putting two of his hands together and just you know and gets a couple of good knocks right on the gararagator's head uh the last one goes and just you know hits him right in the brain even with his tiny brain it winds up giving him a concussion and just knocks him the funk out. Uh, so it's actually kind of a cool scene. And while this whole scene's happening, you know, we sort of see the, the Coliseum depicted uh, in a couple of different pictures. And there's, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people in there. And there's obviously bets going on. We see a, a, bet, a betting board that goes up showing the odds on the actual, you know, the animals that were in there that were fighting, the beasts that were in there that were fighting. And then we get a little bit of background um, from Toriko about Igo itself. Because, you know, Komatsu's like, hey, I thought they only let certain people, they don't let civilians pass, you know, in, into the research facility. I guess they must make an exception for the Coliseum. And then they say, uh, Tariko says, no, look look closely at the, at the patrons, you know. And uh, Komatsu says, well, they look kind of familiar, you know. And we find out that these are various, like, ambassadors, um, you know, for, for the various... Uh, uh, for, for various countries, um, I go the International Gourmet Association or whatever is organization, I guess started out as just like an independent organization, but then when there became the need for it to kind of, you know, go global, so to speak, it became bigger than the United Nations. There's 360 uh, nations that are actually a part of, and they say that some of the nations join just for the perks of being able to have some of their higher ups be able to attend these Coliseum fights, you know, um, you know, hard day at the office, come see some bloodshed at the Coliseum. And it's really neat the way it's just 
explained and depicted because you go and you think that, okay, well, this is, you know, this corporation now, this, this organization is bigger than the United Nations. And they've got so many different countries on board with them, you know, backing them, um, that it's really kind of neat and a really a, a neat sight to behold and, and something to th certainly to think about. So kind of some food for thought there, you know. So these are the type of things that I certainly enjoy learning about the world itself. Um, and then we see uh, Director Mansum, you know, he goes and he's like, okay, well, you know, come on, we're going to go down here, go down here and uh, I saved you a front row seat, you know, Toriko and, you know, it's okay. And they, they go down there and they're getting ready to sit down. And, um, and then, you know, Toriko goes and he's like, he seems to still kind of be in amazement. He's like, are you really going to go and have uh, a battle wolf fight today? You know? And, uh, <laughs> and director Mansum's like, yeah, the people wouldn't lie. You know, and everybody's kind of cheering and this and that, you know, and they're getting ready for this next battle. And, um, you know, we find out a little bit, you know, if Toriko is nervous about the battle wolf or not, I wouldn't say nervous, but if he's kind of like, uh, in, in disbelief and awe, you think, wow, that must be something that's that's pretty badass, you know. Uh, so we wind up going and building up to the whole thing. We get a little bit of the background on what's going on and, and of course, everything with, the, you know, the 360 different nations that belong. And then we find out that all these patrons there are basically just these ambassadors, so to speak, of the various nations um, that, you know, have come to blow off some steam. There's billions, uh, you know, billions of yen that obviously uh, takes, you know, changes hands or whatever uh, every day here, um, especially today because of this this legendary battle wolf fighting. And, um, you know, and certainly it's a, it's a neat attraction that Igo has going on over there. So we wind up then going and seeing it. And this is kind of cool because when I saw the whole Garara Gator against the Troll Kong, I was like, oh, okay, it's like one-on-one -on -one battle. And then he beats whoever wins gets to go to the next battle. No, 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 no. They got, they got like six gates, okay? And they wind up going and first they go and they introduce and they're just like, Elephant Saurus, and this thing comes out, and it's it's uh, listed as a reptile because its trunk is actually like a snake's head, and it's actually listed as a reptile, right? And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, and then there's this badass looking walrus called a growlrus that looks sort of like a walrus and like maybe like a cheetah or like some kind of tiger or something like that. So those are the first two that come out. And I'm thinking, oh, they're gonna fight against each other. And then they go to the next page and they introduce like the uh, troll kong, and but it's a silverback, you know, so it's one of the badass you know leaders, pack leaders of the troll kongs. And then they go and they introduce this other thing, and it's it's got this big, long pachyderm pterodactylus. It's it's a giant bird, is what it is, with a couple of heads. And then it winds up saying like, I guess it's kind of called like a, a, a gerolude or gerolude for short. Uh, but it's this bird-like creature. I don't know if it's going to play any important significance down the road. Uh, if it does, you know, then I'll wind up trying to see if I can get better with the pronunciation of it. But um, as far as I can tell, it's gerolude or gerolude. And uh, so we see those two, and then they're like, um, and then it's like, yeah, but the, the main attraction is, you know, the, the, the thing that people really came to see, uh, Director Mansum tells them, is the... Um the battle wolf and the devil python. Now it's kind of cool because some of these creatures that are fighting each other, that's first of all, they were explaining too in the chapter about in the Colosseum, that's how they're able to gauge some of these capture levels um, because they take creatures and obviously pit them against each other. And if this one can beat this one, but can't beat this one, they can kind of gauge where they are in capture level wise, which I think is pretty neat system of doing that, you know, albeit a little bit, you know, strange, it's still pretty cool. I guess it's an effective method, right? So, um, so the Battle Wolf, it, before the Battle Wolf's even introduced, then you think about it and you're like, Devil Python, wow, that's just a badass thing that, uh, that, that was fought in, in the Puffer Whale arc, uh, and, and obviously it took Coco uh, and Toriko, you know, to take one down. Now, that, a lot of that had to do with the absence of light and everything else, but the point is, is that these is a, Devil Pythons are nothing to be trifled with either. These things are, are pretty badass. So we go and we wind up seeing, you know, the, 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 the Devil Python, but before, and we know he's coming out and everything, but then it's what Gates 5 and 6 are the important things, the Devil Python, the Battle Wolf. Then we go and we see in the final double page spread of the uh, of the chapter, we see the Battle Wolf, you know, and it's kind of cool because it comes out and it says capture level unknown, um, you know, and they introduce it, you know, and it's like, you know, the, the prideful and the age and this and that. So it's really kind of neat. We don't know a whole lot about the Battle Wolf. Um, you know, Toriko goes in, and I know that there's an exchange between him and Mansum, right, as it's being introduced. And uh, and Director Mansum's like, yeah, Toriko, I don't even know if you could beat a Battle Wolf. And Toriko goes, yeah, you, you may be right, you know, that... Just they're 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 smart. They're obviously uh, you know these, these these strong, prideful creatures, and we don't get much of an explanation other than that. Just you know the battle wolf. So you know I'm kind of hoping that uh, that it's going to play up as, as big as they're they're making it out to be. You know, and it's going to be as big and badass because it looks really freaking cool. You know, the picture of it on the double page spread looks very very nice, and, and I enjoy it. So um, that and that that's where the chapter ends off over here. So my uh, chapter question though is. 
Certainly, you know, we've asked a little bit about the world itself. What do you think about that? I've asked about what do you think about, you know, the aspects of the food and how it's described. But really, what do you think about some of these these just really cool, unique creatures? Now, certainly some of them we've already been introduced to before with the Garara Gators, the Troll Kongs, the Devil Python. Um, but, I mean, even just last chapter when they were walking down through the lab, seeing some of these extinct creatures now that have been cloned or, or brought back to life. And, um, man, it really, to me, it's very, very thought-provoking and very imaginative uh, of the creator because they're not just throwaway things. They have a lot of depth and personality to them, it looks like, and a lot of them have these, not just a capture level behind them, but kind of a whole story behind them. So, um, so definitely, you know, what do you think about, like, you know, this whole Coliseum battle type thing to gauge capture levels? which is a great explanation, I think. And then also, too, just some of the beasts and how they're, you know, how they're explained and portrayed as well. Remember to leave your answer in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button, if you think that I deserve it. Uh, and subscribe if you have not done so already. We will look forward to catching you in the next one, nation. Dig the vibe? Please subscribe. That is all.